Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of a, a slice of history with the Butterfly Princess. Now, this week, in this week's edition, I'm going to be reading you some um, historical questions and answers that people have asked and that have appear, appeared in the latest edition of the BBC History magazine. So here goes. The first question is, what was the Gans Marathon craze of the Great Depression? And the answer to this question is, contest in which contests in which couples danced for extended periods, in some cases many weeks or end, became a, a feature of Depression era America. Participants co completed the prize bucket or simply for free food and shelter, shelter. Such competitions provided to offer poor and hungry provide uh, such such competitive competitions provided to offer poor and hungry participants. Rules varied, but generally contestants had to keep their feet moving with regular sharp breaks permitted. In one Chicago dance marathon in 1930, nine couples were still moving 145 days after the contest started. Some competitors such as June Hobick, later a Broadway star, became professional marathon dancers, able to fall asleep instantly in the part. The 1969 film The Shoot Horse, don't they? They shoot horses, don't they? Starring Jane Fonda, starring Jane Fonda and Michael, is reckoned to provide a realistic portrayal portrayal uh, portrayal a realistic of a typical dance marathon. It was based on a novel by Horace McC McCarr, who had worked as a dance bar bouncer in the Depression. Paying audiences could yield big profits from the ruthless showman running, running the marathons, reflecting an appetite for watching others being de demanding. These events were criticised as being degrading and cruel, sometimes rudely, resulting in mental and physical breakdowns. Uh, by the late 1930s, dance marathons were banned in many US cities. The next question. Where is Alexander the Great's body? Where is Alexander the Great's body? One of one of the, on the death of the Great Empire Builder on the death of the Great Empire Builder in thirty three two three BC, age just thirty two. Chaos engulfed the his Mediterranean domain as rival leaders vowed for power. To this day, the case of his death in, in, in Babylonia remains a mystery. Was this a disease or poison? And are the locations of his final re and the location of his final resting place is also unknown. Two years after his death, the body m m began its journey to M Macedonia for burial, but one of Alexander's generals for future but Pharaoh Pekimi Wong still were in, intercepting the coffin and took it to Egypt. It was interred first at Memphis and then rebuilt in the city he had named after himself, Alexandria. Had named uh, Alexandria, but there it was installed as the talisman of the cult verified by the Platonic dynasty for nearly three centuries. Various Roman empires and race writers are reported to have visited the tomb, but at some point its whereabouts were forgotten, despite dozens of attempts to find it. 
there is a about location a book. It's been suggested that it lies beneath another building, possibly the Gallum Mosque or underwater, along with much of the city palace complex. Historian Andrew Chung has recently suggested that 9th century veteran merchants took the body in the belief that they had found the remains of a gospel writer, the gospel writer, Mark the Evangelist. If that is correct, then Alexander's final resting place is in St Mark's Basilica in Venice. Um. Next question. What? Uh, which was the first modern state to abolish the death penalty? The Grand Duchy of Tuscany was the first modern state to abolish capital punishment in seventeen eighty six. Tuscany and its capital Florence had a long tradition of un intellectual. In crime, going back to figures such as Galileo Galilei, for when the Medici Grand Duke had been in, in pa, important pa, pa, patrons. By the end of the 18th century, however, the House of Medici had died out. It was the great Duke Leopold, Leopold I of the Habsburg family who made the change. During his reign, Revolution, revolutions rocked America and France, but Leopold was one of them in writing departs who combined a belief that his, in his royal dynasty to rule with enlightenment ideas about rationalism, freedom and progress. Uh, an, an important influence on the decision was was Cecil B of Matt Thinker, whose book on crimes and punishments had been published in 1780-64, was a leading figure of the Italian Enlightenment and his trait made a major contribution to the development of crimeology. He pointed out how, how, how many laws dated back to the barbarous age of a barbarous age and argued for the absolution of torture and the death penalty. His work was grounded in a, in a theory of ultra, ultima, maximising total human happiness and was ways to more fully de developed by English philosopher Jeremy Beaton, Be Be Beatham, Bentham, but ideas which con controversial and initially published among monsters. However, after his work was previously re received by figures ranging from Catherine the Great of Russia to Thomas Jefferson, he put his name to it. Within five years of, of the publication of the book, Grand Duke Leopold had effectively put a stop to executions in his duchy, although far more the formal abolition had to wait for the two decades. From the 1790s, capital punishment was restrained, after, often justified by military and political emergencies. It was abolished once again when Tuscany joined the New Kingdom of Italy in 1860. The next question, why do we call, we say, Indian summer? In many European languages, a spell of good weather in late autumn is known as old wives. Wives summer, but in English it is Indi it is an Indian summer. Perhaps the greatest surprise in the history of the phrase is how easily this, this American Co colonized, conquered, colonies, conquered the, the entire English speaking world. The, uh, the earliest written mention of the term, terms, term dates from the end of the 18th century by the time 
John John Goldsworthy published Indian Summer of a Fort of of Fort Sale in nineteen eighteen. The phrase had long been familiar in Britain, even though many of the UK believed the term referred to India. In fact, India have have relates to Native have relatives. Here. In fact, India here relates to Native American scheme stemming from the idea that such sharp, un unseasonable warm period was used for activities uh, peculiar to the customs or habits of Native populations, yet no one knew what these were. Suggestions that they involved hunting, setting fires, or even attacking whilst Settlements were conviction. The rigour was solved by Dr. Dr. Matthew R. Haley writing, Haley writing in the September 2017 edition of the Independent Notes on Queries. He published a clipping from an early American newspaper that contains a, rel a reasonable explanation from an early American. Uh, the, and, and, and annual fair was held in Philadelphia beginning on the last Wednesday in November and often coinciding with a few days of pleasant weather. While such fairs existed, they were regularly attended by native people who bought all kinds of articles to exchange for whatever they could find at the fair. These gatherings were discounted soon, discount, discontinued soon after 1788, but the phrases in jog recalling those awesome events. Next question. Is there any truth to the rumours that Catherine the Great was killed by a heart? Despite the popularity of this precious enduring myth, the answer is no. Is a no. Today, the Empress of Russia reigned between 1762, he lived between 1762 and 1796, is celebrated for some by modernising her country and establishing the empire as a global player. However, Catherine II had enemies in the imperial court and beyond, and they kept the will, mill, 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 the mill, the mill returning. A favoured topic for some attacks was her sex life. Catherine was painted as an ephemeniac with unnatural perversions and instability, and instability for young, desire for younger men. This wasn't the first, she wasn't the first to feel the barbs of such accusations, of course. Throughout history, rumours against powerful women have tended to focus on promiscuity or diversity. Think of Cleopatra, Marie Antoinette, Anne Boleyn, and the list goes on. But the story spread about Catherine's demise, was, but the story... But the story... But the story spread about Catherine's demise was especially graphic. It was claimed that she was crushed by a horse during an attempt at a bash after the harness and put the bully system holding her to her scabby and broke. The truth is much more mundane. Catherine died. Catherine died in, in November 1796 after suffering a, 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 a stroke while in her washroom. Next question. What was the defestrations def 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 of Prague? The Czech capital had enjoyed a colourful history that features no fewer than three years three defestrations, events in which people were thrown out of windows. The first was on the 30th of July, 1419, when a procession of police guys followed uh, followers of the, uh, the prospect, 
Koska a religious reformer, John Hess, Jan Hess, who had been executed in 1415, stormed Prague's, Prague's new town hall. A number of, official, a number of officials, including the, the burgomaster chief magistrate, were tossed out of the window and killed. This sparked the huge-scale wars against Catholic forces that ranged rage in Bohemia into the 1430s. The mode of process seems to take on a, sim a symbolic significance for some reformers. So, when religious violence once more erupted in Prague in 1483, Husky, Husky, Huskies employed similar measures, defiscating a number of councillors from various windows at civil, civil buildings across the city. The most famous destructions occurred in 1689-18. Fueled by religion, unsurprisingly, the previous year, Ferdinand of Austria had been elected King of Bohemia. Leading Protestants to fear for the that the devout Catholic ruler would reverse laws granting them religious freedoms. They had reason to worry. Ferdinand halted the building of churches and arrested those who protested. On the 23rd of May 1618, a mob of Bohemian Protestants descended on Prague, led by a veteran soldier caught, caught them. They confronted the Catholic imperial agents in a third floor room of, of Prague Castle. Two men were allowed to leave, but two others, Count Rolinster and John, were bundled out of the window along with their security. Despite falling more than 20 metres, all three, despite falling more than 20 metres, all three men walked, walked away mostly unharmed. Catholics declared for proof of God's protection, to which Protestants responded by claiming that the man's landing had been cushioned by, by donkey. Regardless of how they survived, it's remembered most to the aftermath. The event sparked a full a full blown revolt against Ferdinand, who became the Holy Roman Emperor the following year. That in turn plunged Europe into the one of one into one of the bloodiest conflicts in conflicts in history, the Thirty Years' War. And the last question, um, what are the origins of the cappuccino? In eighteenth century Australia. The word, the word, word, our cap was used for a glass of coffee mixed with cream. Oh, yeah, sorry. In 18th century Austria, we, a some word was used for a glass of coffee mixed with cream, the colour of which echoed the brown hue of the habits worn by Caponian friars. During the 19th century, during the period of Habsburg, Habsburg denomination over the Northern Italy states prior to unification, the youth to spread into, into Italy. Early, early, early 20th century tourist guidebooks explained the cappuccino was served, was served in a smaller cup and contained less milk than a latte. Today's cappuccino. Today's cappuccino evolved in parallel with the, the espresso machine. It this an Italian invention that appeared just before the First World War. The, the, the this uses steam to brew coffee under pressure and is equipped with projecting wands used to warm milk. As these became more powerful. So the habit of furthering, frothing our farming milk de developed. The character of coffee itself was fundamental, fundamentally altered, altered after 1948 when Achilles Gangus revealed, Gangian, re 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 
Weather is nice because I'm the basement machine stretched up. Correct strap, the 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 hot, the hot espresso at much higher pressures. So that concludes this week's edition of a, a slice of history with the butterfly princess. Um. Um. Join me next week for the next week's edition of the of the next of um of a. Of a um a slice of history with the butterfly princess. Well, I'll be reading you an article from the latest edition of BBC History magazine about what really happened to Lord Lucan. So I hope you can join me then. Until then, have a lovely rest of your week, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now. <laughs>